So it's been just over a year since I started my ketamine treatments for my treatment-resistant clinical depression. About a month after starting it, I made a video, and I'll link to it somewhere up here so you can go see it. In that video, I was extremely excited. I was very happy. It was a night and day difference for me. I was hopeful about life and the world and my place in the world and all of that. Uh, and now it's a year on, and I'm not doing as well. So... I wanted to share kind of my journey with ketamine with you so that if you choose to go down this route, you might make different choices than I did um, because mostly I think this is, it, it's probably my fault. So the first thing you'll want to understand is that there are two forms of ketamine for treating depression. One of them is called Spravato. It is a nasal spray version and basically you're depending on the absorption of the of the ketamine through your mucous membranes and your nasal passages for the treatment to, to work. That, as you might expect, is it can vary wildly from treatment to treatment, right? Uh, depending on allergies and a whole, a whole bunch of other factors, it's just not as precise. The other form of ketamine for the treatment of depression is uh, IV ketamine. And this is just regular old ketamine that would be used in a hospital. And so it's not covered by insurance because that use of that version of ketamine is considered off-label. However, anecdotally, it seems that those who can do the IV version of ketamine can go longer between treatments. But as each treatment is $400, that's, that's kind of out of reach for for many people, and again, not covered by insurance. So I've been doing the Spravato version. When you first start the treatment, at least for me, and where I'm, I'm going to get my, my ketamine treatments, it's two times a week for at least six weeks, and so that's what I did. And when I made the video that I referenced earlier, uh, it was about six weeks after I started the treatments, the twice a week treatments, and so yes, I was feeling great because unlike a lot of other options. Ketamine works, if it's going to work at all for you, it works within days, sometimes for people the same day. So you see results very quickly. And so I was feeling great, but then I tried scaling back to once a week. That didn't work so well. I went back to twice a week for a while, and then I scaled down. And now, right now, I'm doing every other week, and I'm definitely not as stable as I was on the once a week. However, as you might have guessed with ketamine, you can't drive after you have a treatment, whether it's the nasal spray or the IV version. No, you're not getting behind the wheel of a car. So there are a lot of logistics for people to work out getting transportation to and from the appointments. And if you're doing that once a week, that can be, that can be challenging. Uh, especially if you're concerned about overburdening your friends and your, your family. Um, and, and, and that's a big thing for me. I don't want to be a burden to anybody. I tried to scale it back to just every other week uh, so that I wasn't constantly bothering people for, for rides. So that's reason number one, that I'm not doing as well a year on as I was when I first started. There's another reason. And to properly explain that, we've got to go outside. So, yep, you guessed it. Walking. Walking is the thing that I have been really lax about doing lately. I was really good at the start, as we all are when we start things, right? We decide, okay, this is a new thing, I'm going to do it. I'm going to be really good at it. I think at one point I decided that I could substitute other forms of exercise for walking and get the same benefit. I was going to replace, you know, the walking with things like push-ups and working out with my elastic bands. It's the walking that actually helps me more than anything else with cleaning the junk out of my head. And I, I made a good effort, and I, I, I kept up with it for a while, but uh, eventually I thought I was too clever, and I was just going to substitute something else for the thing that I knew 
work the best. So bad, bad can, no donor. So that's reason number two. So the third reason that I think I might not be doing as well is just being tired. And I'm not just talking about being sleepy, tired. Okay, just to give you an example of a few of the things that I learned fairly early on in therapy after I started going to therapy last year. For instance, I learned about reframing. So, you know, taking something that's happened uh, or possibly going to happen and looking at it differently. So if you expect a thing to go bad, instead you imagine what it would be like if that thing went well for you. Along with that kind of goes the uh, three positive things for every negative thing. So I have a tendency to catastrophize, and part of combating that for me um, is to write down the negative thought, whatever it is, and then write down three positive thoughts that will counter that negative thought. Then there's the daily walks for my mental health, which, as the name suggests, should be done daily. There's taking 10 minutes in the morning to meditate, and just clear my head of any distractions. Another one that's been kind of hard is actually getting started doing anything. What I was able to do in the early days of therapy is to just try doing something for 20 minutes, setting a timer, and then at the end of that 20 minutes, if I still wasn't feeling it, then I, I could give myself permission to move on to something else. Lately, it's been try something for two minutes because I can't even wrap my head around doing something for 20 minutes. And that's helped. Actually, that has helped a lot. And those are, are, are a few of the exercises that I'm ideally supposed to perform daily to help regulate my mental health. And when you're first starting out in therapy, when everything is new uh, and kind of exciting in a way, right, it's fairly easy to keep up with doing all of these various things. But here it is more than a year later, and it's finally kind of kicked in a little bit in, into my brain here that, uh, that I have to do some form of all of these exercises probably for the rest of my life. It can feel overwhelming at times, and in the last couple of months in particular, I have come to resent the idea that I, I have to trick my brain into behaving the way that most normal people's brains behave. And I get mad that mine just doesn't behave like that automatically, realizing that I've dropped a lot of those habits that were helping me feel much better early on in my therapy, and I, I've, I have to pick them back up. And it's hard to do. I can't look at this in a big picture view, right? I can't. If I start looking at this like, oh, this is what you got to do for the rest of your life, Ken, I get overwhelmed and then I stop doing the, the things that I need to do. So... So, what have I learned? I mean, besides learning the fact that I should have been filming with the dead cat on, on the microphone the entire time, because, you know, plosives, I guess the obvious thing is one, I need to figure out the logistics of this situation so that I can get back to doing once a week ketamine treatments. Two, I've got to get back to the daily walks for sure if nothing else for my mental health, because it just works better than anything else that I've been trying to do. I also need to remember my two-minute rule so that I will actually do things. And the two-minute rule for me right now is the best option. The big thing for me is just, again, trying not to look at this too much in a big picture sort of way. I just have to really get back to being more in the moment, and then when I need to, in the moment, using the tools that I have acquired since starting therapy last year. If you've had 
uh, an experience with using ketamine to treat your clinical treatment resistant depression. I would love to hear what your experience has been like. Otherwise, that's it for this one. I have no idea what I'm going to do with my channel in the new year, but I, I really do want to do something. Although depression being what it is, it took me about a month to make this video. And so that's, you know, that is what it is. Anyway, that's it for this one. Thank you so much for stopping by. Until next time, I'm Ken. I will see you soon.